Merry Christmas, everybody. It's a beautiful white Christmas here in Missouri, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. However, there's so many people who are hurting, and there's so much struggle that's happening, even for people who aren't hurting super intensely, that there's something that I really would like you to know. There is a way that you can make things just get better. I mean, it's really hard for me to say this because I, I start thinking about all the disbelief that so many people have about, you know, there been, there's been so much hype about so many things. Here is something that is totally different, and that is to work directly, step by step, to increase humility. There's a way to do that. And the way is pretty simple. I was an atheist, but as a result of this process of humility, I realized that God definitely exists. Here's what happened to me. I was really depressed, and I went out and I found this set of things that made a process. The process increased love. It increased feeling better. But then in 1998, I decided to reuse the process, but more focused on humility specifically. And the process just rocketed. It's, it worked unbelievably well. It improved every area of my life. For example, I could only write about a sentence an hour. I was so knotted up inside. I couldn't write. I just couldn't write. Um, my ability was shot. But this process opened my ability to write, which helped me professionally a ton, and it increased other abilities as well. But most of all, it helped me help myself in ways that harmonized and helped me then start helping hurting friends. And I've had the great fortune to hear from friends of friends. So the process specifically is to consider one's own thoughts in relation to God. When I was an atheist, I thought, well, if there were an omniscient being or even a, say, a billion-year-old culture somewhere in the universe, maybe now or in the future, then whatever I know is so tiny and incomplete compared to what an omniscient being or even advanced civilization would know, then it makes more sense for me to recognize that I don't actually know anything. All of my knowing is false. It's faulty. It's incomplete. It has gaps in it at minimum. But most likely, it's widely missing the mark, each thing that I know. And so I went, in a sense, I went after my truths. And what happened was that I didn't need any of my truths. And in fact, when I got to a point of almost zero Hillary ideas claimed to be true, when I flattened out my, my truths and threw them away, then this divine feeling came that was 50 times as powerful as the strongest feeling of love that I had ever felt. And so this, this divine feeling allowed me then to really start helping friends. It was quite amazing. So in other words, it was very helpful to more people than just me. If you're hurting, it may be because there's a mismatch between what your soul yearns for and what your mind is thinking. That's, in fact, the kind of thinking that's been coming to me since, that, that my thinking was out of step with reality. For one thing, every thought I had that was true, so-called, was actually not true. And so that was discordant, disharmonious. It was out of agreement with God. To agree with God would be to say, hey, God, 
you know and I don't. That is my current bottom line in terms of my own knowledge. In other words, I don't actually know anything. I can look at the snow and see its beauty and so forth. I can, I can see the breath coming um, into the air. But do I know what snow really is? Do I know what breath really is? I don't know what these things are. Not the way God knows them. So my word for breath, my word for snow, these words are not God's meanings. God's meanings are truth. My meanings are not. And so I basically started to nullify, in other words, disprove that I knew this, that I knew that, the other thing. And then in the final steps, I was, this was in 1998, 1999 especially, I was disproving that I knew what was bad or what was wrong or disproving um, who was at fault um, and what fault was, what blame was, and so forth, and disproving ideas of importance until I realized I'm not important. I'm almost entirely unimportant. And that was like this huge release, huge relief. Finally, I don't need to do anything important. I can just be helpful. So um, then the final thing was to undo my meaning of true. I didn't need it because as I undid that meaning, then I could have ideas freed from false Hillary meanings of true, and those ideas would just either work, or if not, then too bad. I would discard them, and other ideas would arise, uh, arrive and arise, because ideas started to come to me um, that I never imagined, and, and uh, they were helpful ideas. So what I would like to offer anybody who's hurting, and even if you're not hurting, this can help friends, and, and you could consider using the process if you're joyful also. What I want to offer is to uh, describe the process, what it did for me, and what it has done for some friends who decided to use the process as well. Incidentally, or actually it's for me it's a big deal, not only did I end my atheist thinking, not only did I know God exists because of this sublime, divine harmony of love and goodwill and joy and tenderness that I felt, not only w there was that, but it was so easy just to go out and just be helpful and not want anything back. I mean, it was so much better to help without wanting anything. It wasn't like it was altruistic because actually I gained a huge amount by not wanting or needing something to come back. It was like this giant gain for me. So it wasn't really altruism. Really, it was just benefit. I benefited, other people benefited. So that's my bottom line. Does it benefit people? Does it help? Can you feel the harmony increase after something has happened? After you thought a thought? After a certain word has clicked or not clicked? And I found that so many meanings of words actually interfered with my reception of God's divine harmony. Since 1999 and 2000, there's been this radiance that has just come at me. It's like just a whammo of radiance, divine radiance. No atheist, not even Richard Dawkins, could, he's like the ultimate atheist on the planet these days, or said to be anyway, or claims to be. If Richard Dawkins experienced what I experienced, he would be like, uh, oops, I guess I was wrong. You know, but he wouldn't experience that unless he chopped down all his ideas first and then saw what happened. So I call it the humility experiment. The experiment is to increase harmony, increase humility, and just keep doing that. And then you see, uh, by see, I mean you feel this amazing, amazing radiance of love coming at you from within because, of course, as we have learned in the Bible, in a number of places, 
the kingdom of God is actually within us. The kingdom of heaven is within us. So I've got much, much more to share. I've been doing such intense research, and I've got a very demanding job. And, and so that's why you haven't heard from me. I want to be helpful. That's my bottom line. And have a wonderful Christmas. And I hope there weren't too many sound glitches. Um, I've had to do this video a few times because there's sound glitches. But hopefully it's not going to drop out like crazy. Have a lovely day. Wonderful Christmas. Happy New Year. And I'll see you um, hopefully like just in a few days. All right. Cheers.